that's great. I can't call you at home and I can't call you on this number. Where the hell can I call you? Something's happened. I can't tell you now. Well, when, for God's sake? Janine! Listen, I've got to talk to you. I don't care if it's finished. I need your help. Please, Rick. Do you mind fitting a little more work in your emotional life now? I'm waiting to get started out there. Ow! Drop dead! Look, sorry, Janine. Use the phone if you want. I'm Australia if you want. What's wrong with reading the New York Times? To incubate great thought, one must have stimuli. Everybody should read the New York Times. But as you're living in London, I really think you ought to read an Evening Standard occasionally. Evening Standard is not a paper, it's a postage stamp. And if you want something big enough to sleep under, at least buy the London Times. Tell you what, I'll get two copies and we can head for the pond. Huh? Genji! Hey, look out! Hey! abandoned about an hour ago, sir. <clears throat> Left any longer, would have been stripped of the bone round here. It was reported stolen yesterday outside a supermarket in Islington. It didn't have your trademark on it then, of course. I suppose we should feel lucky you didn't mow down everything in sight. What, are you kidding me? We watched this guy aim the car right at her. He knocked her in the air like a bowling pin. What, do you want me to do, wave him down with a flashlight? Uh, her name was Janine Martin. You torn her place apart yet? That was next. I think we'll let Chaz handle it. Uh, she lived alone, Chief. Worked for a small agency. I'm not a Red Indian, make peace. I'm a detective superintendent. You call me anything, you call me sir. Still picking up bad habits. Still trying not to, sir. Anything in it? Anything at all? It's clean. You might send it to forensic, but they ain't gonna come up with a name and address. Very thorough. Somebody's gone to a lot of trouble. We want this one, Chief. Harry and me. Well, you're on it, aren't you? Start finding out. Try not to shoot down too much traffic. Just got your message, Minister. Came straight here. The girl is dead. Oh, 
course, certain things must be attended to. Yes. They must be. You must have some idea who she phoned. Giving her boyfriend some stick by the sound of it. I didn't take much notice. She usually had a drama going on with one of them. She had a few, eh? Yeah, one here, one there. No more than most. Was there one in particular? Yeah. Well, maybe. None of my business. Meaning what? Yes or no? Meaning I do have better things to do than this. None of my business, right? I just take the pictures. Well, if there's something you think we should know, I'd like to hear it. Because otherwise I'm going to take a picture of you. And I'm going to put it on my wall so I don't forget you. Is he threatening me? No. Not yet. You were saying something about her boyfriends. Yeah, well, you'll hear about it sooner or later. The chat was that she was having it on the side with this big political guy. Don't ask me who it is, because I don't know, and I don't care. None of my business, and I don't vote. You just take the pictures. Look, if you had to listen to half the crap some of these chicks come out with, you'd be foaming at the mouth within the week. Yeah, life is hard, then you die. Pardon? Where did you hear this? Oh, a model friend of hers. You know what they're like, they can't keep their mouths shut for five minutes. Yeah, must be hell for you. Where can we find this friend? Same agency as Janine. Name's Lucy Gartrell. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, is that it? Have I finished? Or what? Maybe you should have been nicer to him. He is rather well-known. I gave him my well-known treatment. What's so special about him? His lacy underwear, actually. His what? <laughs> no, he photographed a collection for a Bond Street shop. It's quite sought after. More for mistresses than for wives, you know the sort of thing. Yeah, I know the sort of thing. How do you know that sort of thing? Why shouldn't I? I buy it. So what do you make about his gossip about the girl? No, it wouldn't be the first time that somebody had a sugar daddy in your illustrious house of parliament. Mm. She wouldn't be the first victim of it either. Yeah, so how do we check it out? We bust into Westminster and we yell out, Yo, who's the dirty old man fooling around with the young girl? Trouble is, they might all get up. studio they were standing in the bloody road when it happened oh god they've killed her for it paul they must have what are we going to do it's all right. it's okay. we've got to tell somebody no, we okay. so we've got to tell the police we can't those we're in this up to our bloody necks side to catch the mail it can be stolen very easy that way see we let it drop right to the ground and uh, anyway lucy's been out of town a while it seems how about the neighbors yeah usual stuff hear no evil see no evil apart from some loud music about a month ago she may as well have been invisible huh. it's not a gay neighborhood is it I mean, people stop noticing a beautiful broad oh they're just a tourist attraction for new york policemen i think we finished here make peace dempsey 
this lock. It's of the flimsy variety. Mm -mm. Now look, think of it as a humanitarian concern. The girl's taking a bath. The phone rings. She gets up to answer. She slips on the tile. Badoom! Oh, no. Oh, no. broken leg. Maybe even worse, concussion. She's laying there helpless. Unable to reach the phone. Laying there helpless. What are we to do? What do you have? Uh, Scott? I need what? some help. Something good. Well, you know me, Paul. Honest Arch Wharton, working man's friend. I'm looking good. it. What would 200 quid buy? Well, a lot. It'll take a little time, though. Very little time. I'm in a hurry. Sure. Sure. Mm hmm. The lovely Lucy's been doing very well for herself. Mm hmm. <laughs> you know, my piece, maybe you're in the wrong business. Is that a compliment? No. She's been doing a lot of travelling recently. Oh, yeah? Where's she been? She was in Amsterdam a week ago. How'd she get there? Flew in and out of ship all the other dates. You know, I wonder if, uh... Janine? Uh, yeah, Janine. I wonder if Janine has taken a trip recently. It had to be done. Janine had a habit. She could have turned us in for the price of a fix. The other girl's clean, I checked. Are you sure you want this done? <laughs> yes, I understand. Bye. What did he say? We are to put Lucy out of harm's way without delay. The police are onto her. We can't risk another talker. And what about the boyfriend, Davis? The same. Are we still moving the merchandise? Of course. Nobody's going to touch us. Least of all, the police. Chaz has got all of Janine's papers at the office. Would you have mine? Desk work for the moment. Yeah, that's what I thought. Look, why don't you just drop me someplace? Dempsey, 50% of this job is sticking facts together at a desk. You can't just walk out on it. I'm not walking out on it. Okay, we're a team, right? So you do 50% of the desk work and I'll do 50% of the leg work, okay? We'll match up later. What's this? Some place. You asked me to drop you off here, remember? You're all hard, Harry. It's made of steel. Mm. Are you absolutely sure about this, Chris? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Bye. What's this, then? You're not thinking of leaving us for the glittering lights, are you? Not quite my line, sir. Anyway, I'd miss your dulcet tones. I've been checking up on Janine and Lucy where I can. Any luck? Mm -hmm. A bit. You're not going to like it, though. Well, it won't be for the first time, will it? Try me. Right. Janine and Lucy were making regular flights together, mostly to Amsterdam. Couriers? According to their agency, they weren't there on modelling jobs. What about uh, Janine's fella? Any lead on him? Mm-hmm. That's the bit you're not going to like. I told you a moment ago, try me. Okay. 
We picked up some gossip about Janine being involved with a political bigwig. No names, just a rumour. So I've been checking the address book that Chaz found at her flat. You're not going to tell me she had the whole Tory party down in alphabetical order, are you? Because if you do, I shall start laughing. I shall go, ho, ho, ho. Not quite. Try laughing at the name Richard Clarendon, if it means anything to you. Foreign office. What about him? Well, I found this number by itself in here. No name, no address, and it turned out to be extra rectory too. So I've just had it checked out. Mm -hmm. Go on. Well, it turned out to be the flat of Mr. Richard Clarendon. Respectable father, husband, and Whitehall heavy. Now, what would Janine be doing with a number like that? Applying for a job in the civil service? I don't know. But you sit on until I give you the say-so. Understood? The press would have a bloody field day. And by the way, where's Starksky or Butcher, whatever he calls himself? I dropped him on Albert Bridge. He wanted to do some legwork. a restricted class, ladies only. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> I'm looking for a lady, uh, a model. I heard a lot of models work out here. Lucy Gartrell. Throw a stick and you'll hit six models, but no Lucy Gartrell, I'm afraid. Is this a personal interest or a professional one? Personal? I mean, uh, professional, strictly professional. Um, she needs help. I need to talk to her. Well, you won't find her here. There's another dance studio in Kensington that's quite popular. You could try there. Yeah, I did, and uh, they told me to try you. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you. Yeah, but it's Lucy that needs the help. I mean, really, she's in trouble. I've heard that before. Not from me, you haven't. I need to find her. Come on. The muscles will get stiff. Let's take a little walk. somewhere what's the matter desk work getting to you Harry I got us a lead on Lucy Gottrell I need you to come get me what do you mean why should you because you're my partner that's why hey I'm out here digging and dying for the team honey I told you heavy leg work all right where are you yep I know it Oh, um, by the way, we've been told to soft pedal until Spikings has had a word upstairs. I hope you didn't jump on anybody to get this. Not yet. But don't leave me here too long, because I might get round to it. I'll see ya. I wish to reassure myself of your silence on certain important matters. The unfortunate death of your young friend, for one. 
You killed her. He killed her for you, didn't he? The police are very interested in you, so I think it would be best if you were kept from their scrutiny for a while. You and Davis. Where is he, by the way? Get her in the car. The boyfriend can't be far away. Let's hope he's more manageable, shall we? It was very professional. Mm. I took her for a protein drink. Strictly police business. Looked more like loitering with intent to me. All right. What did she tell you? Apart from the fact that you were wonderful. Apart from that, she told me that uh, Lucy was shacked up with this guy, Davis. Has she seen them recently? Not for a week or so. OK, let's go and find that address. I take it she did give you an address. Oh, sure. She even gave me Davis's address. Just like your place. After the maid came. Nice driving. I'm sure you'll be comfortable here, Lucy. I'll leave your friend, Mr. Sullivan, to keep you company. We'll make do, won't we, darling? Relax, Davis. You're not going anywhere. You've just resisted arrest, remember? Oh, yeah? A couple of strangers break into my flat. They start chasing after me when I go for help. I can have you done for assault. Yeah, you could. Right after you fall down the stairs and break your face. Understand? Who are you covering for? I don't know anything. Lucy does. Where is she? I told you. I don't know anything. I'd like 
to travel, do you, Davis? Seems to be a popular pastime amongst you and your friends. I don't know what you're talking about. We checked your passport. You and Lucy seem to be real 20th century little Marco Polos. What were you carrying? If you want to help Lucy, tell us. <laughs> you know something? I think you two probably turn over the flat as a stunt to scare me. I don't talk. Harry? Spikings wants a word. Too sweet and all that. You too, Dempsey, if you can spare a moment. Sure. Put him down, Dempsey. We'll lock him up and he can chew on it if he leaves him anything to chew with. We were just getting started. I'll be back. We'll see how he gets his results. Mm, by the throat. Unless, of course, they're female. You going someplace? No, nope, you are. I thought you said he was here. Not here. Whitehall, room 104, Foreign Office Annex. I gather he's checking on Harry's find. Hmm. Must be about Karen, will it? What find? Oh, just desk work, Dempsey. Nothing you'd recognize. Unless, of course, you were breaking it over somebody's head. You want to see us, Chief? That's right. I want you both to listen carefully to what Major Danby here has to say on the subject of our murder victim. He's in charge of what you might call surveillance of all the illustrious bodies around here. Isn't that right, Major? Including Richard Clarendon, of course. Your inspector tells me you've discovered a link between Mr. Clarendon and the unfortunate girl. Unfortunate? She's dead. What I have to tell you is that this department is fully aware of the situation. And there is no question of involving Mr. Clarendon in a public murder inquiry just now. I smell some red tape here. What's the score? Can this guy do this? Yes, of course he can. Otherwise, he wouldn't even be telling us this much, would you, Major Danby? I'm glad you take the point, Sergeant. She might, but I don't. Who is this guy? He's talking politics, Dempsey. We mustn't get our big boots in the way around here. Diplomatic discretion. I did smell red tape. Okay, so what if this guy killed somebody? What do we do, give him a ticket? Mr. Clarendon is not involved in murder. You can be quite sure of that. We may be clandestine, but we're not corrupt, Lieutenant. The only contact with the girl recently was a series of phone calls, all of which were discouraged, as was the affair some time ago. Are you personally out there? Ah. So you still have the phone calls, presumably. Could we at least have access to those? Naturally, we want to help, as long as security isn't affected. The transcripts will be under a D notice, of course, but apart from that, you can make what use of them you will. And as soon as this unfortunate incident is over, the better for all of us. You tap Clarendon's phone, and then you cover up the murder of his mistress. You're quite a guy, Major. Only a cog in a machine, Lieutenant. Like yourself. Don't cog me. Servicemen in pinstripe suits! If I'd wanted to be told where to get off by staff officers, I'd have stayed in the army. I do not take kindly to being told what this unit can or cannot do. You know, I can relate to that. I understand that totally. You know, you try and do your job, you try and do good work, and there's always somebody there to try and bust your cojones. That's much appreciated, Dempsey. I think. Oh, we could make some discreet inquiries, sir, to find out if anybody owes Danby a favor. Out of the question. Most improper. Just a thought. Just keep it that way. Oh, uh, by the way, I neglected to mention to Major Danby that we already had Davis in custody. I bet you that guy plays a mean game of poker. I think you will be well pleased with this shipment, Mr. Featherman. The quality of your merchandise has never been in question. 
You are a remarkable man, Mr. Van Gelder. Never has anyone been able to supply so much so regularly and at such high quality. We are well organized. Your couriers never seem to be stopped. There is an element of luck. Perhaps. But they seem always to know when and where to enter the country with the merchandise. Every time. Don't you wish to examine them? I do not need to. Why? Because I am not buying. As you like. I can sell them elsewhere. I do not think so. Ours is a quiet trade. You are moving in powerful circles. People are not pleased with the way things are happening, where their money is going. We have had some minor problems with our couriers. You do not seem to understand, Mr. Van Gelder. You are persona non grata in this business as of now. These are worthless in this country. Nobody will touch them. I suggest you advise your principal. Try to contact me. Not very likely, is it? I don't know where you two idiots get the impression that somebody's trying to take her. Could be the full moon. So? So what are we doing? Waiting. Something will turn up. Body in a river. Dumped in a park. Who knows? Dangerous profession at the moment, being a model. Mm. It's not gonna work. No, it's not, is it? You're not going to help us find her. I think she's going to die. Please, understand that it's over between us. It's impossible for me, Janine. I simply can't be involved. Listen, I've got to talk to you. I don't care if it's finished. I need your help. Please, Richard. Same as the rest. She calls him. He stalls. Whatever it was, she saw it coming. Clarendon doesn't seem to care. Or he was told not to. Now, Davis, on the other hand, I'm sure does, even though he doesn't show it. Which may mean he really does care. Have you noticed how Davis reacts every time her name is mentioned? Mm. Stefan, I got the fever. Got him scared. Do you know what I think, Dempsey? You tell me. It's just admiring the desk work. I think we should meet. No, tonight. All right, ring me when you get back. I believe we must review our situation as a matter of urgency. I don't like it. This is another one of your circus tricks, you... you American. And I don't like it. 
What do you want us to do, huh? You want us to call Dial a Crook, ask him who did it? Right away, sir. Come on, we got a chance here. I suppose he's persuaded you, has he? He's right, sir. It's a chance. If Lucy Gartrell's in the same danger as Janine, we don't have time to wait for a break. Let Davis go, sir. That's right. If he's in with him, he'll know where they are. And if they got his girl, he'll go looking for her. All we gotta do is stick with him. Yeah, that's all. And what if you lose him? What if he gets to him with a gun? They already searched his place. He ain't got one. Then you'll have the pleasure of putting us on traffic duty. You'll be lucky if you get that. Or we get a result for you tonight. It's not like you to go for circus acts, Harry. Hardly. And it was my idea. Sucker. Yeah! Come here! How do you feel about traffic duty right now? Yeah, those are good. I like the little white gloves. Charlie one two. Still on foot. Looks like he's heading for his flat. Let him go where he wants to. Just don't spook him. break off. What a good idea.
Charlie one two to Charlie five. Do you read me? Right on, Charlie one two. I've just dropped your man in Deptford Park by the school. Three four out the door. Keep an eye on her for all our sakes. There's no need Where to... is she? The houseboat. I want to meet this partner of yours. You get him down there. Impossible. I have a proposition for him. He would never... I think he will. <laughs> oh, we got him. We got him. Going east. Uh, east to... Uh... King Street. stupid. Very difficult to get access to my personal file, Spike Eames. How did you manage that? No point in denying it, Major Danby. And even less point in telling you how I did it. I hope you're now satisfied that I do not have a sinister involvement in this matter. Yes. Time to pool our resources, then. I have been making my own inquiries. I have evidence of corruption at the highest level. to the authorities, eh? And they move the good on one mistake. You should never have set up Janine with Clarendon. It, it, it seemed like a good way of... Uh, to, to keep tabs on him at the time. When she started getting scared because you were getting heavy and ran to him, she... she had to die. Because you, you would have gone, gone down too. If, if, if Clarence had, had, had learned my, my, my business activities. You know, you've been very successful moving merchandise in and out of this country. Well, now... Now you're gonna move Lucy and me. I'm sure that can be done. And lots of cash. Lots. Or I'm going into print. Oh! It's all right, Lucy, it's all right. <laughs>
Is he okay? I'll call an ambulance. Clarendon has just been told. I believe he is somewhat disturbed. He never suspected. Too busy avoiding scandals. The poor boy. Which reminds me, it might be best to keep a low profile with the press on this one. Dandy, right? He's just doing his job. Not such a bad chap, actually. We talking about the same Danby? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, it's just like New York. There's no difference. Dempsey. It's the same difference. I'm telling you, when it's rotten, it's rotten. It's the old flim Dempsey. flam cover up here. When they try to tell me my ancestors came over here in a Mayflower. What? Can I have your hat? My hat? No. Oh. 